Okay guys, I think I got it all. Let's chat something really cool. Hi friends, welcome to the Aeroponic Tower channel. Today, super cool project we're gonna work on. It's actually a question I get quite a bit. So I'm excited to share this with you guys. So I don't know if you're like me, but when the new year comes, I like to set new goals. Uh, typically they're around up-leveling my physical activity or my health and wellness via foods. I love pushing the boundaries on what I grow on my towers. I love maximizing what I can grow on them. And I really find a tremendous amount of enjoyment learning about plants and the health benefits they have on our bodies and then figuring out how to grow those at a maximum capacity on the towers. And so one of my goals in 2024 is to start juicing celery juice every day. I want to do like 32 ounces, which is quite a bit. So that means a lot of celery and celery at the grocery store has gotten quite expensive. It's very difficult to find organic celery in our area up in the mountains unless I drive to a Whole Foods or somewhere and honestly guys celery at the store has no comparison to homegrown celery whether you're growing it in the soil or aeroponically like I am the taste is not the same at all celery grown on the towers and it depends on each variety too i grow several different varieties has the most incredible most robust flavor where celery at the grocery store has that i call it dead soup flavor it's that classic like cream of soup cream of celery taste where you can taste that it's celery, but it doesn't really have a distinctive taste. So if you are new to growing your own celery, just be warned that when you taste it, it is not the same as the grocery store, and that's actually a really good thing because that means we are growing fresh, better than organic, celery that's loaded with nutrients, and we're eating it when those nutrients are at their peak, not when most of them have died in transit while it's going to the grocery store. Celery can also be cleaned with different products before growing to the grocery store, which can kill the nutrients and add um, extra things to the celery. I don't know if you guys remember being a kid and you would take the celery and stick it in the food dye and it would change colors because it would soak up water that had food coloring in it. So when we're soaking our celery in some sort of cleaner in order to make it a safer to store at a grocery store or in transit. Remember that celery is incredibly absorbent and so that stuff is going to absorb into the celery as well. So I think growing your own is super important if you really want to do the celery juice a day thing. Now if that's a new concept to you I'll link a book below. Advocate for the book as much as I am for people who have really done this for a significant amount of time and have incredible healing stories. So that's kind of why I want to do it. The book is interesting, but it's the people who have actually done it and told the stories that motivate me to want to add this to my health journey this year. So that's what I'm doing. If you're interested in growing celery, whether it's having one stock so you can make your soups and everything, not dead soup celery, actually alive tasting amazing soups. Um, these tips will help. And if you want to set up a whole tower like I am, this will be part one of a series where I take you through those steps. And I will make a playlist of those just because I can't show you all the steps today because I don't have any that's actually ready to start juicing. And it's taken me a while to get to this point. So I'm going to talk about how I got here so you can map out the same process if you're interested. And if you're not, and you just want to know how to grow celery, I'll cover all those tips as well. Here's my celery. So I've been doing this for a while um, to get this going. I had hoped to launch January 1st and start this, but I was behind getting some of my towers in the garage and just behind, right? It happens, life. So I'm getting close though. And I'm going to grow these on a home unit, set up my home unit a little bit different, and I have a baby greens extension kit on it. Now this is for the purpose of having enough celery to be able to juice every single day and 32 ounces, because that's a lot. And I'm gonna say every day, but I know me, it's probably gonna be five days a week is more of a realistic goal. I tend to not do well in absolutes where it has to be every single day. It's just my personality. I have defiance disorder, I think. And sometimes when the boundaries are too restrictive, I repel against them. So I have found like going to the gym, I stay in the five to six days a week. 
not the seventh day. And we all need rest too. And that's just healthier balance in my opinion. Anyway, so my goal is five days a week. If I do seven, even better, but we'll see. Okay, so when we're growing celery, there's a few things to know. There's a couple of different varieties and the ones that I'm growing are Utah Tall and, and a hybrid version from Park Seed Company. And I'll put the name right here. Uh, both are very, have grown really well. One is a little bit shorter. The Utah Tall is definitely taller. The Utah Tall has a more traditional pungent celery flavor. The hybrid has a sweeter flavor to it. It's actually really, really, really good. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. So those are the two I'm growing right now that's planted out. And then I am also growing some pink celery from some pink Chinese celery. So a little bit different, much stronger in flavor. And I'm not sure if I'm going to juice it as a whole plant because it is definitely a stronger flavor, or if I may just add a few stalks to my juice to kind of diversify because it's got different colors in it. And Chinese celery is celery. It just has thinner stalks. It's in the same family. Um, and so I'll cover that as we go along in the other parts of this, if you're interested in juicing celery. But Chinese celery is great. It's one that I actually dehydrate and turn into a powder and we use it as almost like a celery salt substitute because it's very, very salty and really amazing. So what is celery? Celery, and you can look it up and it'll say it's a vegetable or an herb. It's in the parsley family. So we're talking about a plant that is in what I consider one of the really potent cleansing medicinal herb families. And so just like parsley, I like to eat it in large amounts, juice it in large amounts, and it's not a condiment. And I think uh, as a culture, we've kind of made celery like a filler in soups or a condiment, same as parsley, you top a little bit on top, but really there's some amazing benefits to consuming large amounts of it and it's a hearty food so i can make something like tabbouleh out of parsley and make an entire meal out of it i like to take huge bundles i'll take two full stalks of celery and cook it and add it to some rice and make celery wild rice and mo half of that meal is celery where the other half is the wild rice so these can be substantial foods in our diet and the cool thing is they grow really well on the towers um, so we're checking off like a really big food component that we'd have to buy at the grocery store right celery uh, parsley at the grocery store is so gross to me it's so wilty and weird and then celery i tried to do the juice cleanse and this kind of this is how this came about last year and was blown away at the cost of organic. It was hard to find organic, like I mentioned before. And it's just, it's not the same taste. It was so disappointing to me compared to what I've experienced with the homegrown. So here we are. So right now, the, the thing with celery is celery takes a really long time to grow. So if we want to juice it, then we need to grow a lot of it and interval plant it. That's gonna be the key to su success here. And I haven't gotten to the juicing part, so we may have to tweak this as we go. So I'm gonna try and overshoot with how much I'm growing to make sure that if I wanna do five days a week that I can get there, it may take a little bit of time. But that's gonna be the key. You're gonna to have to establish your system and then stay on top of it if you want to do this. If you want celery available in like one to have that you can harvest off of for snacking or for soups, all the time on your tower, then the model's the same. So I'm gonna be doing this in a large scale, but if you wanna grow celery, the process is the same regardless, because we need to stay on top of interval planting celery in order to have celery because it takes so long in the early phase. So this is a tray right here of baby celeries. They, there's something else in there too, but it looks like I planted Four, five with Chinese celery and three with regular celery. And so when I'm planting the, and these are six weeks. No, these are a month. 
and they're super tiny. So these are sitting on my grow station. We've got germination and we're starting to get leaves and get a little bit of growth. But you can see in one month, this is all we've gotten so far. So it takes time. And this is the same if you're growing it outside. It just is a slow growing crop in the early stages. Now it picks up speed as you go along towards the end. So we need to get these started um, right now. I am leaning towards every six weeks, making sure you're starting new rock wool. That's been what I, the formula I've been following. And then I multi-seed these. So we only want one celery seed to grow in a grow port, one celery plant to grow in a grow port. And the reason is if you multi-seed them, they turn into this, a bouquet of celery. This is fine. We can use this like garnish and you could juice this too but we really want to get these to be like a grocery store type celery because that is the size that's going to give us all that liquid that we need for juicing or give us more texture for our recipes i like to make um, or on tuna with chickpeas and i like to have really crunchy celery or when i make my rice like i mentioned um, which is in my ebook. That recipe is in my ebook, The Ultimate Tower Gardening Guide, and all the instructions for doing this as well. But I like to have thick, dense celery, and so this is not gonna give us that. So what I do is heavily seed it, and I allow it to grow as multiple plants for a while, because after these grow in the baby nursery, will probably be in there for another three weeks before they go into the towers. And then in the towers, we're gonna have about a month where they're going from this size to this size. So it's a slow process. And if I can grow five or six of them at the same time, it takes up less space on my tower. I don't need to have eight rock, well, eight grow ports occupied with a tiny little celery like this, that's gonna take a long time. I can get a lot of that growth, have, I can allow a lot of that growth to happen while they are partnered up and then pull them apart. So that has been my trick to getting more celery growing faster without having to take up a ton of space on my tower. Now, I made a big whoopsie with this one. You want to do it I would say this is like the max size. That's a big difference. You wanna break them apart. Ideally, you break them apart when they're about this size, five or six inches. And you also wanna to remember to, when you put them in your tower, don't put them in a net pot because we don't wanna damage any roots by having to pull them out of the net pot. We wanna use clips or just put them in the, the um, baby greens extension section. Most of the time, the baby greens extension is where I grow my celery. I call it the celery nursery and where they get to this size before I move them to their own grow port. So I didn't do that with this one. It's okay, we're still gonna move forward. So I'm just gonna carefully take off this. Now you can see the roots aren't big on the celery. It's a big plant for those tiny roots. That has been what I have found to be the nature of celery. You get big stalks. So as they're growing, especially if you're growing outside, the base of the celery can get really big and we wanna make sure that's lifted outside our grow port so that it has room to expand and get really large. But the actual root system, on all the ones I have ever grown, both indoor and out, stays relatively small. Okay, so we took off our rock wool. Now, what we need to do is have some already soaked rock wool ready. And I don't even know how many I have here. I'm gonna break this one apart last, but I'll show you how to do it if you ever make the oopsie like me. I'm not going to not do it. What we're gonna do is break these apart and give each celery their own rock wool. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it on some of these little ones too because I'm setting up this tower and I can do that now because I have the real estate for it. And after we do this, your plants are gonna wilt and look a little bit sad. It's okay, just give them time. Within about five days, it usually doesn't even take that long. It may take that long for this one. This one's gonna be super sad, but that's okay. It, they will bounce back. I've never had one die after doing this. I may have lost one or two celery leaf stalks where they just didn't come back and I just trim those and we carry on and move forward. They have 
they have always done really great when I do this. So let's get started here. I'm gonna take this off so I don't get it wet. Okay, so all we're gonna do is take our rock wool and break it open. And we don't wanna break it completely open, we just wanna, oh, oh, it's dripping. These are actually soaking in rock wool, in uh, water. You want these to be nice and wet because it makes it easier to work with them. So I've got it open straight down the middle, but this side is still attached. And let's take the ideal size one and do this one first. So these roots are pretty um, intertwined together at this point. So what I'm gonna do, oh, there's actually three babies on here, is just peel away some of the rock wool that I can without ruining the roots so I can get a better look at my celery. All right. And then we're just going to take it out. Now, did I rip some roots and leave some of these in there? Yes. Did I take some of this roots and put it over here? Yes, it's fine though. This one will do better because it got the majority of the roots. This one's definitely smaller, but it's going to do just fine. So we're just gonna put it inside this new rock wool. And if you need to, and I'll show you this in a minute. When you place it in here, it's important that we get all of the green part above the rock wool. So that's what we're going for. Don't bury any of the actual celery base in the rock wool. And that's it. We're gonna put it in our tower. It's gonna look sideways and floppy for a few days. Then eventually it'll perk back up as it gets its roots reestablished and we will have our magnificent grocery store-like celery in a few months. This one, this one will probably just stay the same. I think this one will transition like nothing even happened to it because it's so strong. But this one has a larger portion of roots and rock wool. So for this one, I'm gonna cut the rock wool in half. And then when I go to put this in the tower, I'm just gonna attach the half. We don't need to cover the roots. The roots are in the air and then are being fed the water and the minerals. So it doesn't matter that these are covered or anything like that. It's just we want it tight enough that when I put it in the tower, it's stable. I don't want this to go in with just that because it can be a little bit loose and loose um, and be less stable. And because like I said, these don't get super big roots, even as full grown plants. It amazes me how little roots they have sometimes for the amount of plant I get off of them. So we wanna make sure that we have that rock will just add some stability to that root base. So now we have two. Let's look at these. All right, with this one, it looks like there's five. I try to do, because I'm juicing these, I tried to do at least five per rock wool. Looks like four. And there is a germination fail rate with celery. So even if you only want two celery plants, you might wanna go ahead and plant four to five seeds because there can be a germination fail rate. So I'm gonna pull out one of these. The others are really small. And so I wanna work out this big one. And give it its own grow port. But I'm gonna leave these little ones and just put them in the Baby Greens extension until they get a little bit bigger. This one has two. And some wheatgrass. All right, this one I'm gonna go ahead and break apart. There we go. So there's one. I just took the other half of that rock wool. That's, this one I took quite a bit of the roots and left them in the other one. Again, it's fine, don't worry. It'll come back, but I'm gonna give it its own rock wool because of that. And this one can get a half. This is another one where there's two really tiny and one more substantial. 
So we're gonna go ahead and separate that one out. All right, so we're chugging along. How many do we have here? Okay, we have two big ones and two itty bitties. So let's go ahead and get these two larger ones out. I'm doing these kind of young, but it's actually because I wanna know how many plants I have to get this celery juice tower started. All right, so we took these apart. And this is a great way. If you can get them like this, and then kind of, a lot of these I've just been ripping, but if you can ease them apart. That is the best option. Okay, and we have quite a bit of celery. These larger ones are, all right, so we've got all these little babies separated. Let's work on this one right here. So this one only has one celery plant and then this one little offshoot. So I'm gonna leave this one. Celery will, make babies off the offshoots, off its, I don't know what you call it, the um, stock. And there's a little bit of that going on. I'm gonna take that one off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that one. This one's got the main celery. It looks really healthy. Let's see, but here we've got two strong. One, one big and one dwarfed. Just gonna rip them apart. Now we have two. Look at how squatty that one was because this one was taking up all the space now this one can take off and be its own plant we'll just give it a half a rock roll ready to go now we've got this one has a lot oh this one's going to be so great so it looks like we have one two three four five celery this one has a nice, healthy root system that's a little bit longer. So I'm gonna peel the rock wool off of this one first. Okay, so I got rid of some of the rock wool. Now we're just gonna start to tug a little bit. So I can see most of the little feeder roots, the smaller roots on this one have come off and there's a nice root there and that's what I was going for. I was trying to keep as much of this longer root intact. And we'll just repeat that process. Number two. Number three. Four. There's a little tiny, I don't know if that one will make it. Five. And six and seven. That's a lot. I'm gonna need more rock wool. Let me start adding these in. Because they don't have any rock wool, we're gonna give them a whole one. Make sure not to cover that green. And I 
have a few that need rock wool, three of them. Let's go ahead and work on this beast. Actually, here's this one. And then we will put these in the tower together and count how many we have. We have quite a few. I'm impressed. Okay. So, this one. One, two. We have six plants in here. So, it's the reason I say wait till they're about five to six inches is because they are more tolerable of abuse. So this one I can be a little bit rough with and just rip it. Celery will even grow without roots. If you buy grocery store celery, cut the bottom off and stick it in water, it'll regrow. I don't recommend doing that on the towers it, for many reasons. It's You need to grow it from seed if you want to grow celery, but they are definitely more tolerable to this kind of behavior. You cannot do this with every plant. So since this one's so intertwined, I just need to rip it and take off any broken celery stalks and make sure that each plant gets a decent size root bed and they will grow back just fine. Ah. So we got that one. That was three. These smaller ones don't need as much root, so four. five and six let me go get some more rock wool and then we'll get these in the tower you're gonna get a rock a grow port you're gonna get a grow port grow okay so the benefit of this table is i can move it where i need it to go so we're gonna move you we're gonna move you guys and we're gonna move this table right behind you and talk about this tower and get these in where in their final destination. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, so here is the tower we're gonna to use. This is a home tower. It is set up with three standard grow ports on the bottom. And then I have this, the home tower comes with two rows or 16 baby green sections. I added the baby greens extension kit here to the middle. And then I've got my grow ports up top. Now this tower is set up like this because when I was rebuilding it, I accidentally forgot to put this one on the bottom and I was too lazy to move it. I'm going to just go with it now. And this will work because I can get nice tall celery up here, but it'll also give me room on this top row which is eight grow sections for taller celery. So I'll be able to get some large maturity out of the individual celeries on this row. This middle section here is what we're gonna call the nursery. This is where I'm going to put in maybe like towards the bottom as they come ready. You know, you guys know I'm always into world planting. So when I have multi-seeded ones, they can go in here as they're getting bigger. When I move them and as they grow, I can move them throughout this tower. So I can have this for the ones that are multi-seeded uh, while I'm waiting for them to get that five inches. And then once they are that five inches, I can put them on the top row. I can continue to leave them in these sections and allow them to get bigger for a while. Or I can go ahead and move them into one of my grow ports. The goal, this is 20. So ideally, that's 20 days of juicing. That's a pretty significant amount of days of juicing growing from just one of the grow ports. So we need to get these to the largest size for juicing. And one celery stock full grown should be enough juice or for me, that'd be plenty juice. The, I think the goal is like 32 ounces and I haven't juiced celery off a tower in a while. I don't know if we can get that much. That might require more than one, but we'll figure that out when we get to that. So let's go ahead and start getting these in here. And this one, I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see that? This one was leaning out. I turned them towards the tower. Celery is gonna wanna lean one way or the other. So now it's hugging the tower and it'll help it be more stable. This one, See how it's going this way towards me? We need 
the flat part, this is the part of, this is the lip. This is the part that goes up against the tower. We want the lean to be up against the part that goes towards the tower, so we're leaning into the tower. That one's just gonna flop to the side. In a couple of days, that does not matter. It's just now trying to give them some stability because they're very angry. You can also take bits of rock wool, any scraps you have, and prop them up too. If you feel like it's just too much lean, that can sometimes work. And so here I'm just going to load up the tower. I'm putting all of the largest ones in the standard grow ports and then I'll put the little ones in the Baby Greens extension kit. And I did some math and if you were to pay $3 per celery, which is a little lower than what it cost us, but I think in different areas it just kind of depends where you're at. Then there's 64 grow ports on here. So if we make this all celery, that would be $192 worth of celery that we can grow. And this will be an interval planting process. So as one comes out of the bottom and I juice it, one of the ones in the nursery that's larger will go down to a standard grow port. A new seedling will go into the nursery section and we'll just continue that process indefinitely as long as I want to keep having celery juice fresh every single day. So or five days a week. So that's a significant amount of savings. Like this tower could pay for itself in what, two, four, like five months just in celery, which is incredible. Not to mention we get that added flavor and we get the better than organic. We don't have to worry about anything, um, you know, pesticides or anything on our food. So it's just really great. I'm really excited to have this tower set up and it's already been a few days now and it's looking great. Everything transitioned perfectly. There's no issues with any of the plants and I will keep you guys posted as we go further along on this journey. Okay, here she is. We have four, eight, 16, I still have like 40 spots. So when you put a baby greens extension kit on these, you end up with 64 grow sections and I have 20 filled plus 21, 22, 23. No, I don't even have 20 filled, 12, 25 celery. Um, I have another, another 12 ready to go and I'm gonna need to start another at least 12 now because we're coming up on that six week mark. We're at, we're right at about a month, but I'm going to go ahead and start them. So this is going to take a while to get a good rotating system of celery growing. Do I have more celery? <gasps> Jackpot. I knew I had more. All right. So we have another five plants here. So yay, that's good. So that gives me a jump start. So this is the celery tower. If you guys want to continue on the journey, I will make a playlist specifically for growing celery for juicing. And I will take you guys along on the journey. And once we get to this, this part where we can start juicing them, uh, the goal will be then that we have stayed on top of this stair step ladder and We'll have access to all of the celery we need at that point and can continue to stay on top of it may have to tweak that four to six week range as far as how often we're starting seeds um we'll just have to see make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications if you want to follow along if you are unfamiliar with juicing celery for health purposes i'll put a link to a book below there's so many people on the internet too. You can Google on this topic. And it's just been really incredible to hear some of their healing stories. I absolutely believe in the power of plants to heal the body. I believe this particular family of plant, the Apicea, Apicea, Apa, blah, 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 put the name right there, is a very powerful medicinal 
plant and one that we can consume in large amounts. There are very powerful medicinal plants out there, but we don't want to be consuming those in a large amount. This is one we can consume like a food and really get those benefits in. So I'm super excited. This tower right here is a health goal and a gardening dream coming to life to be able to grow my own celery year round to juice daily. The power of that is absolutely incredible. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next video.